Rust full stack web frameworks are getting really, really good. And it's clear to me that love for Rust front end development is pretty much universal. In a previous video, I made a browser based chatbot using the Leptos full stack framework. So we're talking Rust on both the front end and the back end. The Leptos framework is really, really good, but it's not the only game in town. A full stack Rust web framework called Dioxys aims to fill a similar niche, but maybe with slightly different priorities. And Dioxys Labs actually has some pretty significant financial backing by none other than Y Combinator. Yeah, the same folks that funded Airbnb, Stripe, DoorDash, Instacart, Coinbase, Reddit, Dropbox, and many others. And watch out folks, their office has snacks. Just throw a few mechanical keyboards in there and the jokes aside, the vision for Dioxys is actually really compelling. Quick background for those who don't know, WebAssembly has had browser support across the board for many years now, which opens up the door for developers to use pretty much any mainstream language to build their front end, instead of being constrained to a language that can compile to JavaScript. And you could definitely make the case that Rust is at the front of the pack when it comes to front end development with WebAssembly. Combine that with the fact that Rust is a great choice for back end development because of its performance and memory safety, and that's a recipe for full stack frameworks to sprout up, and sprout up they have. And with modern features like hot reloading and server functions, some of these frameworks actually have a pretty solid developer experience. Now back to Dioxys. They aim to offer first-class support for basically all the platforms that you might want to target, web, desktop, and mobile. Whereas the Leptos framework aims to replicate many of the concepts introduced by SolidJS, Dioxys actually takes its inspiration more from ReactJS. I've been pretty happy with Leptos so far, but I wanted to see what's going on in the Dioxys camp. Of course, ReactJS popularized the concept of being able to embed HTML-like language in your code so that it's straightforward to interpolate computed values from your business logic into your page markup. SolidJS, and by extension Leptos, also take that approach. Leptos has this view macro that allows you to write markup similar to the way that React's JSX does. You just set up your DOM tree as if you're writing HTML. The first thing that struck me as being really nice about Dioxys is the way it does templates. Instead of using an HTML-like syntax, it uses this really simple syntax where you have the name of the element followed by some curly braces. And then inside the curly braces, you have a common delimited list of things. And these things can be one of three things. It can be an attribute of the associated element, for example, the class attribute to specify CSS classes on that element. Number two, it can be control flow, like if statements or loops. And the output of those can be one or more elements. So that makes it really easy to render lists of things or show parts of the page conditionally. And then of course, child elements can be just plain text as well. I actually found that I prefer this approach to the Leptos template syntax, quite a bit actually. Like React, Dioxys has this use state hook and like SolidJS, Leptos has the create signal function. Under the hood, they work quite differently, but from a developer perspective, they're pretty similar. Both give you the ability to track some state and the framework automatically figures out which parts of the page need to be re-rendered as the result of any changes to that state. With create signal and leptos, you get both a read and write signal, so you have the ability to consume or mutate the state inside that signal. In Dioxys, one interesting difference is that in addition to the use state hook, which allows you to replace the state value using the set function, it also has this hook called use ref, which actually allows you to mutate the state value in place without replacing it. For example, if your state is a struct and you just need to change one of the fields without replacing the entire struct. So use ref might be better in some cases than use state. Dioxys actually does require you to pass this scope structure whenever you call use state. Leptos used to require something similar, but now all you need to pass to create signal is the initial value of the signal. The way you actually inject state into the templates also differs quite a bit. To read a signal in your template, Leptos actually requires you to embed a closure inside the template, which you then surround with curly braces. Then when you reference a signal inside the closure, the resulting value gets automatically updated whenever the value of the signal changes. One interesting thing is that you can actually just not have the closure and it'll still compile, but it actually won't re-render reactively. That's something I've been bit by a few times now, actually. To inject state into a Dioxys template, you actually create a string with curly braces in it and then reference your state inside those curly braces. At first glance, it might seem like the fact that you're referring to the value inside a string might mean that you don't get compile time type checking for it, but you actually do. Crazy Rust macro magic. Of course, the building block of a reactive front end is the component. And both Dioxys and Leptos have a component macro that you use to annotate the function that you'd like to serve as a component. Both allow you to pass data from a parent component to a child simply by adding a parameter to the child component function. Leptos and Dioxys also both have server functions. This is probably my favorite part about both of these frameworks and they work pretty much the same way in each. Say you wanna write a backend API that will be consumed by your front end. All you need to do is write a normal function and annotate it with the server macro. 
If there are any parameters, the front end is going to send the API. You can just add those as parameters to the function. Okay, so what does this give you? The stuff you put inside of the function gets run on the server, but you can call the function in your front end code as if it's just a normal function. Behind the scenes on the front end, it actually makes an HTTP request to the back end, which then invokes the function. But all of that is completely abstracted away from you, the developer. That's pretty sweet. There's not a whole lot to talk about in terms of high level differences between Leptos and Dioxos server functions. But one difference is that Leptos supports using either the Axum or Actix web frameworks as the backend server, while Dioxus only supports Axum. Some might see that as an advantage of using Leptos. I honestly personally don't care too much whether Axum or Actix is used on the back end. Apparently they're pretty comparable in terms of performance. And all I can think about is what a nightmare it must be for the Leptos developers to have to support both. So hats off to them. Okay, so say we've written our server functions. How does each front end handle retrieving data from those server functions? Well, Leptos has this concept of resources, which are basically just a wrapper around some signals that provide some extra state for tracking whether the request is completed, failed, or in progress. Daxus is a concept called use future, which is kind of similar to Leptos's resource in that it holds the data that you're retrieving from the server, but also tracks some extra state around the status of the request to the backend. Both resource and use future give you the ability to specify a list of state dependencies that when changed, will kick off another request to the server. Okay, we've gone over some of the biggest similarities and differences between Leptos and Dioxys. Say you wanna start a full stack Rust project. Which one should you choose? Before we go there, I do need to emphasize that both frameworks are in a pre 1.0 state, so it's probably not a good idea to use either for any business critical applications yet. You're not going to have any sort of guarantees that you're not going to run into bugs or have all the features you need and so on. In my experience with both frameworks, I haven't personally run into a situation where I wanted to do something and there was no way to do it. And having used Leptos for a while now, I still haven't run into a single bug. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for Dioxys. I did run into several rough edges there. Nothing that was insurmountable with the help of the maintainers, but there was definitely a bit of frustration at times. Both frameworks have Discord servers where the maintainers are very active in answering questions. So if you get stuck or you have a technical question, you can ask on Discord and there's a good chance you'll get a helpful response pretty quickly. Anyway, to answer the question, in my anecdotal experience, Leptos does seem to be in a bit more of a mature state than Dioxys. It's worth noting though that Dioxys has pretty significant investor backing and they have a pretty grand vision in that they aim to allow you to target all platforms. So that's worth considering as well and the landscape could potentially change very quickly. It'll be interesting to see how these frameworks develop over the next few years, and who knows, maybe there'll be even more new ones that pop up. If you are interested in the play-by-play -play of how to build a browser-based chatbot using the Leptos framework, definitely check out this video where I walk through the entire process. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.